Good afternoon, folks. It would help if I muted myself, wouldn't it? It is Friday. Congratulations to you for getting to the end of another working week. Give yourselves a massive pat on the back, will you? First of all, uh, as we go into the weekend, if you want to support me, please head over to the Patreon or head become a member of the channel. Every little helps. As we're going into the late summer time here, where we're gearing up of our, our RPG campaigns, gearing those up, trying to get them ready for the end of the summer, so we can go into the winter and have really epic campaigns over the winter. That'd be really, really cool. Anyway, you can also support me by going over to Composite Games and giving them some love. And making sure that you use the promo code Northern Exile down below. Whenever you get any, any of your hobby supplies, that gives you 5% off at checkout, which gives you 25% off when you uh, when you eventually do check out. Because most of the stuff there is 20% off. And also, the Goods Merchant. They finally have a website, ladies and gentlemen. Thank God. Here we are. <clears throat> um, using the promo code Northern Exile gets you 10% off any of their really cool D&D stuff. And as you can see down here, we have... Um, dice shakers, DM screens, really epic DM screens, to actually even think about it. Tiles, the lot. Everything is here for you. If you are a role player, this is the kind of guy you want to be supporting and getting your money behind because they do some really terrific stuff. And all the testimonies that I've seen have been spot on too. The people loving his stuff. So, you need a dice shaker or you need to like style on your friends as a DM by having something like this, then, you know... Head on over there, give them some support, and not use promo code Northern Exile down below to get yourself 10% uh, off at discount. And also, you do get the, you can get some of these really cool uh, 40k themed dice shakers, which I really like. Anyway, let's get on to some hobby nightmares, shall we? Before we go anywhere, do anything. So we have quite a few today um, that have come out of the woodwork, which is very, very nice. Excellent, got quite a few. Let's get let's dive into them then, shall we? So Gravy Grave says, and I think Gravy Grave has given us some hobby nightmares in the past. Pretty cool of him. Just turn that down a little bit. So Gravy Gravy Grave says, I had an awesome crew whilst I was a manager at Games Workshop. Awesome, brilliant. Um. I love the job and I love the customers. Okay. Everything GW related was terrible. I learned that the previous manager had just worked there for a few months and I thought, that's odd. But didn't give it much thought until later. Training was a bit nitpicking, but I'd worked in an Apple store re previously and so I was, custom I was accustomed to the nitpicking. Again, emphasis was on hooking the customers and then comes the sales. Again, this, this should have just sold uh, the F out of every mom and dad coming to buy something for their kid. But was trusting GW a mistake on my part? Okay, guys, if you're going to send me if you're gonna send me messages, they need to be properly written. I mean, I, I love reading them. But please read over them before you send them in. Because when I read them, it, doesn't, it really does mess with the flow of my reading if it's all over the place and jumbled up and you, and the, the vocabulary is all over the place. I don't know where to stop or start. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so I will carry on reading this, but next time, Gravy, let's get it written properly. And uh, anybody else who I've said this to in the past, please make sure it's written properly so I can actually get a bit of a flow to my writing. You can tell I enjoy the stories a lot more when I can just read them and really get immersed in them, right? Um... I, if, you, if you're dyslexic or that, fair enough, get somebody else to help you write it. No problem, you know? Or tell me. Get, get on a call with me. Tell, say, Exile, can I do a call with you, please? No problem. And I'll take notes as I'm, as I'm, as I'm uh, listening to you. No problem. There's ways and means around it. Anyway, the offer isn't for everybody, by the way. Only if you're struggling to write something, message me. Because I, I don't have loads of free time. Anyway, so he says... Mm. Okay, trusting GW was a big mistake on my part. I got back to the store, started to get the store itself in shape, and decided to have gaming nights. Our slow grow build, your new army, from 500 points. And it was going great. All of us, too, started new armies, and we had a league going. A few other ideas and things were running smoothly, and the Christmas was good. Christmas is the most important time, by the way. This is me talking now. As a, as a GW um, manager or staff member, Christmas is your most important time of the year. 
another time uh, a trainer comes in to ask me and to train me and asked why do i still have that chap with the baby if you recall the first story i don't isn't he a bad person and a salesperson and i started to feel something of a personal grudge from that chain from that trainer against the chap i had taught it was so petty i had never in any sales position seen that kind of witch hunt against the person yeah um this is something trainers do trainers uh, at dw um some of them are good some of them if they are if they are against you there is nothing you can ever do to win them over they want you gone gone yesterday uh, my trainer initially was somebody who was really nice and um and we went for a few pints and i thought this guy's pretty cool you know but he always tended to want to go for he always tended to want to go for pints after a busy thursday you know so he'd come and visit me after you know, if he was giving training to some, another manager in the local area he'd come and visit me in my store and um he'd come in at about five six o'clock on a thursday and he'd say right you know let's go for a beer and you know i'm like okay yeah, fair enough and then by the time like 10 o'clock runs out because my late opening night is thursday by the time we get to like me, me closing up and it's like 10 o'clock i'm not in the mood to go for a beer so after like five or six times of doing this i was like listen dude do you mind if i just go home tonight because like you know i'm just a bit knackered you know and i swear it was one of those occasions where i think i only did it to him like twice out of like eight or nine times when i literally was like you know not tonight man i'm so so knackered you know um I swear it was one of those times that started to turn him, you know, that started to get him annoyed at me. And uh, then we had the training incidents where, you know, they they, they didn't send me... Well, they, they sent emails to the wrong email address, so I got no emails from my first uh, my first retail workshop almost. So I, I had, you know, the, the base information of what was needed. So I went there with what I was given, the information that I was given. Didn't have half the stuff that I needed, and then he he completely went schizo and just and just hated the fact that I wasn't there with anything. And I was like, "Well, dude, you know, standing up for myself, dude, you haven't told me what I need. You're, this company hasn't told me what I need. I don't have any of these emails that you're talking about. Let me show you my email account. I showed him in my email account on my phone. You can see there's none of the emails that you've sent are there on my on my store email account or my personal email account or any email account that I use. I only use two. So, you know, um, he had a bee in his bonnet from then on after, and my time at Games Workshop was numbered, to say the least. It, it, it was, it, we were counting down the days then until I found something to get me out of there, essentially. Um, and, you know, I, I, I went before I was pushed, essentially. Um, you know, even though in the end of the day, I, I came in and, and I applied for the job, my own job, because, you know, as you do. And, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm getting into stories that I've already gone over millions of times. If you want to hear about those stories, they are on the channel. So go and have a read of them. Uh, or listen to them. So Grave Your Grave continues. No indications of any kind that they thought I was doing a bad job. They told me once that cash deposit was a, was a, was light a few euros. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Yeah, if you cash deposit as light is light by, like, two quid, it, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Um, you've, you've just lost two pound down the fucking, down the side of a chair or something. Yeah, it, it happens. I've had like 20, 30 pounds missing and they, they've not given a shit before. Like, you know, it just happens. Like, like you, it just fucking, the amount of times where I've been like shit, you know, when you're doing the cashing up, that's when it happens to me. You're doing the cashing up and you, you're trying to get home. So you're doing the cashing up and a fiver like flies off the table or, you know, gets stuck behind something or whatever. And, you know, you're £5 light at the end of the month. They don't care. They don't care, man. It, it's fine. I told them that in my country, the bank charges to bring in cash. So, if I had a €250 Euro deposit, they would not get €250, Euros, but €250 minus the expenses. Okay. Next training in the UK arrived, and I didn't get my flight tickets, and I called them. There must be a mistake. We'll email you the new ones, they said. A week later, a week earlier, my friend had asked if GW was opening another shop because they applied for a store manager position. Warning sign, if I didn't see it. And I said, hmm, I don't know, maybe. Phone rings. This douchebag from head office lets me go via the phone. No proper reason given. Then I realised that the previous manager was let go the same way and I wasn't... I was now, and two next managers were let go in a similar way. Well, 
Just out of spite, I closed the shop immediately and got some beers for the crew. And we, are, and we got a bit drunk in the back office as I turned in my keys. The company needs drones for their stores. No independent thought is good. I also hated the fact that I had the company email on my phone days after, uh, after I got let go. And I saw the manager from the other store who came to keep the store going stealing my ideas that I presented but never got around to execute. Well, yeah, don't leave stuff in the store. Do not leave stuff in the store. Um, I, I had a very similar experience with mine. Going back and, you know, talking to people who were frequenting the store after I'd left. And were saying, hey, you know all those ideas that, you know, they didn't like? Yeah, we're doing them now. <laughs> you know. Just just crazy. Just crazy. You know all those ideas that you came up with that, that, that head office didn't like? Yeah, we're allowed to do them now. It's just, oh, okay. Brilliant. Thanks. You know. I am now in a much better working place, but the whole experience was devastating. It is awful to be fired, but getting fired without even being given a reason is kind of a mindfuck. I kept second-guessing myself for months, and it really bugged the hell out of me. Okay. And the chap with the baby, he acted as an interim store manager for a while, until that douchebag trainer finally ousted him, and the chap had me there present when they when they held a hearing in the, in the store back room about the situation. I had to hold my, my mouth shut because of my friend. We become friends. One good aspect of this shit show. But it was obvious that the trainer finally, after two years of witch hunt, got his wish and my friend was unemployed. So all in all, beware of what you wish for. It might not be what you expect. I do most of my shopping online via smaller retailers, but sometimes I do visit the shop. I think they have now found, found their manager, but as I have chatted to him, he's pushed working while sick slash extra hours, etc., so you really need no other life when you give your soul to DW. Um, <clears throat> that is the end of the story. So, yeah. I really... This is why when, when I see bigger YouTubers saying, well, Ding Games Workshop treat their staff very well. How the fuck do you know? How the fuck do you know? Do you Have you worked for Games Workshop? Do you know anybody who's worked for retail at Games Workshop? I'd be very surprised if you do, because you have big, massive YouTube channels, and you don't need to know anybody at retail at Games Workshop. All you need to know is the guys in the studio who give you your little, your little bits of information, so you can put it on a YouTube channel, right? Again, naming no names, and no, it's not Valrak that I'm talking about, right? There are, there are tons of YouTubers online who who seem to think that Games Workshop, and, and go go and look it up. Like, let's put it into YouTube. Go and put it into YouTube, um, Games Workshop employees things, and, and avoid my videos because you know what you're going to get from there. But like, there are tons, at least when I say tons, of the like the twenty big ones, but the twenty big Warhammer YouTubers, I would say there are, you know, at least six or seven who, when they talk about this, they seem to push the narrative that Games Workshop is good, like to their custom, to their to their staff and stuff. They're not. They're not. They're shit. They're a shitty company to work for. They are a absolutely god awful company to work for. Unless for some unknown reason, they take a liking to you. Somebody at GW takes a liking to you and thinks you're all right. If that happens, you've got a chance. But if if you go in there and you're a normal guy and you just want to help the hobby grow, they're not interested, dude. They're not interested. Not interested at all. Anyway, um, unfortunately, though, you know, you, you do get a lot of people working in Games Workshop who run massive stores, and so they get massive numbers simply because of what their store is. And they tend to pass off like, like it's their success, when really it's the fact that they run the London store or they run the Manchester store. It's like, yeah, of course, you're going to do big numbers, you know. You're you're the only store of that type in, this, in that part of the city. You're going to be doing insane numbers every single year because everyone gets more money year in, year out, right? Um... One thing that, that doesn't stop is hobbyists. They're always going to like plow their money into their hobbies no matter what happens. So I've seen guys go without rent to actually get models. You know, it happens. So yeah, but a lot of those guys are the worst Games Workshop managers in terms of being shitbags and being brown-nosing little twats. They're the worst, but they, they have the big stores and so they, you know, they're going to stick around for 20, 30 years and probably retire at Games Workshop. Anyway... 
Let's do the next. Radius. What does Radius have to say? Radius says, I currently work at a very magical resort hotel run by a very magical company in the heart of Florida. I wonder who that is. This magical company had some years ago announced the grand opening of a new resort hotel that was a premium experience that allowed guests to take a cruise in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> I think I heard about this. Lots of excitement followed, and the announcement and the public was eagerly awaiting uh, the announcement of the... Uh, sorry, I'll read this again. Lots of excitement followed the announcement, and the public was eagerly awaiting the announcement of an opening date. Of course, the virus of unspecified national origin struck and put hold to those plants. It was China. It was China. Anyway, uh, flash forward to one year ago. And this magical company finally announced an opening date for this very premium resort hotel experience. I've worked for this magical company for almost 15 years. And had been following the news surrounding this hotel for some time. I thought a hotel such as this would be a blast to work in. And I was excited when the company announced that they were hiring for transfers to this very resort. Naturally, I dusted off my resume and sent in my application. I honestly didn't expect anything to come of it. So imagine my surprise when I received an email asking me to schedule an in-person interview for a front desk position. Dealing with the smelling general public. Ugh. Ugh. I figured competition for those positions would be stiff. And I spent a few days trying to figure out a way I could stand out from the other candidates. Finally, a brilliant idea struck me. A hotel such as this was built around a specific story, the story that would be heavily scripted. Anyone working there would need to be in character at all times, and that would require extreme attention to detail. Okay, all right, all right, well, this is going to be... Sounds like something from hell to me, but, you know, there we go. How could I demonstrate this? Why... With some of my painted Star Wars Legion miniatures, of course, I picked... I mean, you've, well, you've outed what you're talking about now. So, <laughs> so... I picked out a few of my best ones. Bosk, Director Krennic, and Emperor Palpatine. I placed them in an appropriate carrying case and stashed them somewhere I wouldn't forget them and tried not to think about the upcoming interview. Finally, the big day comes and I walk into the interview with minis in hand. I shake hands with the general manager of the hotel I'll be interviewing for, the general manager of another hotel, and the VP of the, of the resort hotel division of the company. The interview goes very well, and the three of them seem very interested in my answers to their questions. Finally, the VP asks me if there's some anything else they should know about me and why I want to work at this hotel. I smile, pull out the case, and take up my minis. The response was pretty much instant. Oh my god, these are awesome, said the VP. And the three of them start asking me questions about the minis. I phrase each answer so that it makes the point that my attention to detail is very high. And I explain how miniature painting helps build that particular skill. I also mention that this sort of skill would be extremely important for a hotel that had to convince guests that they were being whisked off to a galaxy far, far away. The VP nods approvingly and asks if he can take some pictures of my, of my minis to show the rest of the team. I leave the interview feeling really good about everything, and I'm sure I've just nailed it. Alright. Two months later, I received an email from the company recruiter for the hotel regarding my application. I open the email to and begin to read. Dear Mr. Heretic, which is, you know, his screen name, not... His second name is not Heretic. Thank you for your interest in applying for, for to be a part of this one-of-a-kind hotel resort experience. Unfortunately, our system marked you as a no-call or no-show for your interview. We apologise that this was in error. However, this was not identified until very recently and regrettably, all positions have been filled. We have corrected the error in our system and invite you to resubmit your application in the future. To say I was pissed was an understatement. Yeah. Yeah. Botching an interview is one thing but I was livid that I'd lost my chance to be one of the opening team of a one-of-a-kind hotel because of a fucking glitch in a computer system. Luckily, I had recently accepted another position elsewhere within the company, 
and once the less than stellar reviews for this hotel started coming out, I decided I was better off not getting that, prom that position. Especially since I was hearing from people that, that were working there that there had been some shenanigans regarding their paychecks. Oof. I like to think I would have gotten the job given my reaction, the minis my got, that, that, that my minis got. But I've gotten over it even though it still pisses me off a little bit. By the way, I realised I botched sending this just a bit. The force is not with me regarding technical matters I'm afraid. I have some more stories including a horror story from the hobby store that was my first job out of high school but we'll save that for another time. I guess the fact that I don't have Nitro wasn't allowing me to post it all at once. Okay, so this is a nicely written letter. Thank you very much. And it was really easy to read. Um, really good. Uh, yeah, that really sucks, dude. That really, really sucks that you lost that you lost it because of corporate shenanigans. But every cloud of silver lining, I've heard that hotel is a massive shit show. So I think you're doing quite well for yourself. Even though you're working for the most evil corporations I've ever seen in my entire life. But anyway, Obsidian Rocker says... Greetings, Archduke, Archduke Exile the Third Esquire. Well, but now, if I'm an Archduke, I can't be an Esquire. Because Esquire means you're a single gentleman and you don't have any title. So, you know, don't quote an Englishman on titles. I messaged you a little while back with, uh, about advice on picking a first army and your advice was great. After the video, I took some time to look into more of the armies and have since decided I'm going to start collecting Necrons. Spooky, scary space skeletons was a good opener. But their backstory, combined with how they imprisoned their oppressors, for want of a better word, the Catan, and now used them as batteries, was what sealed the deal for me. It's pretty fucking metal if you ask me. I've since bought a three pack of Intercessor Space Marines and paints sets to get a little painting practice before I start on collecting Necrons. Brilliant. That's not what I decided to write this, this message to you for, however. The main subject I want to get into was inspired by your recent video, Race in Warhammer and Fantasy. Yeah, that wasn't controversial at all. It's a subject I've been thinking about for a while now. Diversity versus variety. To sum it up, I've always I've always seen diversity as something that's forced into media in order in order to tick boxes and appeal to a wider audience, with no real passion put into it. I could list examples. But I feel uh, like we can all list several media in the past few years that fit into this quite favourably. The diversity side of the conversation, I mean. So I won't get into that. Variety, on the other hand, is something that feels organic. Like the writers of the media in question genuinely wanted to write those characters. I think a really good example of variety over diversity is Overwatch. At least when it was first released. The cast of characters back then felt like the writers of Blizzard were just having fun with it. From brothers with a tragic backstory that led to redemption with Hanzo and Genji, to a sentient robot monk with Zen, Zen Yatta, okay. from wacky Australian criminals, Junkrat and Roadhog, to edgy mercenaries with Widowmaker and Reaper, from cyborg cowboy Jesse McGree to guerrilla scientist Winston. All of these characters w w run the gamut of creativity, the lifeblood of writing. It's since gotten a little pandering with just, th with, with just throwing character darts at an LGBT dartboard. But back in 2016, when, the f when it first came out, I thought the roster of heroes in Overwatch was great. Variety versus diversity. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the matter. All right, so... Um... I would agree with you for the most part. Like, variety is good. I think I made that point in the race video, to be honest with you. And variety in in race and culture and religion is great in a fantasy setting. Especially in a work of fiction, if you're going to be world building. It's great to have different areas of the world, follow different things, and for those things to breed conflict. That's really interesting, because it happened in our own world. And it gives... The amount of people I know who have gotten into historical timelines, like the, like the Crusades and stuff like that, through fantasy fiction that's written properly. You know, it's insane. So yeah, vi variety is good. And diversity as a thing, I like the way that you've coined it there. Yeah, diversity is bad, but but variety is good. I like that. Yeah, I can go along with that. Um, I don't know anything about Overwatch because I'm not 12. But, uh, <laughs> sorry. But, um, you know, I, I, yeah, honestly, I don't know anything about Overwatch, but I'm sure um, as a thing, it's 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 it was very. I went to somebody's house back in the day, 
right? And we were supposed. I'm still salty about it. There, there was there was two or three hot women there, and I was like, great, I'm gonna get there. It's gonna be a party, and I can you know sound some people out, like see if they want to you know see if they're available. So I went there, and all they did all night was sit in a on a couch, like eight or nine of them, and watch an Overwatch esports event. And they didn't even drink or do anything. They just sat there and just watched it. And I was just sitting there looking around going, this is it's Friday night, guys. This is what we're doing. Okay, this is what we're doing. And eventually I left. And I just thought, you know what? Maybe all nerds, maybe not every nerd is for me. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe not every every nerd is my kind of guy. Maybe I need to like branch out a little bit. Um, so yeah, that was my my depressing Overwatch story. That, and I generally don't like games that are competitive, where you press the Q button and win. It just, just doesn't, you know. Um, I, I can't stand um, what's-his-face Apex Legends. It's too colourful. There's too many things going on at once on screen. I can't be bothered. It just makes me tired to play it. Again, I'm not 12. I don't, don't, have, don't have the mental reflexes to deal with it. Um, give me Alden Ring. That's colourful enough. I've been playing that the last couple of days. Uh, that'll do. I, that, I'm fine with that. I can just F around on that and not get worried about it. Anyway... So that, that's my, I said before, that's my variety versus diversity thought. And you essentially asked me a question that I answered in the race video um, in fantasy. So I would literally go and rewatch that, dude. But yeah, I, I agree with your points, though. Variety versus diversity. I think variety is good. Diversity is bad. I think that's a good way of looking at it. Um, you know, having the thing about variety is the way that it works for me in fantasy fiction is you can have variety, but it makes sense. Do you know what I mean? So that, um, you know, empires that are in a certain area of the world that is very hot and warm will have darker skin. You still have variety in your setting, but it's made out of sense. It's, it, you know, it, it makes sense that these people exist in that area. Diversity being the same, being, no, well, not the same, being completely different. Diversity is just off the walls. We need to be painting by numbers here. And it's okay to have a European setting with lots of black or Asian people in it. No, it's not. It makes no sense whatsoever. Unless, unless your entire world... It, it, you can have an entire world, right, where the standard people on this world are Asian. No problem. No problem. Great. Right? You would then need to tell me why white people are in this part of the world. And if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. You can't just inject white people into feudal Japan. If your setting is about feudal feudal Japan, you are ticking diversity boxes if you're just plonking white people into feudal Japan. Then that white people can exist in your setting, that's variety. But why are they in this one area? You know? Uh, one way this is this was done very well. Do you guys remember the Kevin Costner film Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, right? And they had um what was his name? Morgan Freeman in the film. And he was a Saracen. Right? He was a Saracen friend of Robin Hood. Of Robin Loxley. And that's how, that's why he's in England, because he comes back with him. He, 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 they were in the Holy Land. They meet, and he goes, "Look, I'll take you to England. You'll love this." And they go to England, and he's in England. That's variety of people, of purpose, of creed, of colour. That's variety. It's not diversity, right? There is a very good reason why Morgan Freeman's character is in England as a black man in medieval England. There's a very good reason for it. Right? Are there 20 of him? No, because that wouldn't be very realistic. That would be painting by numbers, diversity, rather than adding variety. So, there you go. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Don't know anything about uh, about um, Overwatch, but I agree with you. Alright, so, Cowardly Corporal says, If you're a corporal, you shouldn't really be cowardly. Yeah, just saying. Um... Hi Northern, wanted to share a little story of a cool GW that helped me when I first started the hobby. See, we do balanced stories in this channel. I started 40k back in 5th edition when I was a little kid and only had a Commissar Yarrick and an, and an Imperial Guard squad. I had gone to visit my cousin and since got hyped on 40k uh, to the point we both went to the Games Workshop store to, uh, that was close to his house. The adults left us to our business while we while we were in the store. We picked up all we needed to play the to play a game together, a box of dice for each of us, uh, another squad and heavy weapons team. 
Yet, when it came time to pay, we didn't have enough. We were $3 off, and while it wasn't much for two kids, that was a big deal. Which, sh which should we leave? The dice, the infantry, the heavy weapons teams, the blast templates? As the panic was setting into our eyes, the Games Workshop employee told us not to worry, and that he would cover the cost of the missing part. This might not have seemed much the most, but it's... Uh, but but this man became a legend to me. Sometimes I think about him and wonder if he still works there. Would like to get him a beer as thanks for back, for way back then. When it came to my 40k times, I played Garage Hammer with a close friend. But as soon as we uh, got into the hobby, our friend that got into it left it. And with nobody else to play with, it being seen as pretty badly back in the day... We both quit. Okay, yeah. Let me just read this as it is. And with nobody else to play with and it being seen pretty badly back in the day, we both quiet. That, that, that was that sentence. We both... Anyway. Uh, I got back in and found a good group on Facebook uh, and with the Meetup app. I gotta say, I love it. I still play my first army, the Imperial Guard slash Astromiratorum. And made some lore that my sworn enemy was the Tyranids, the faction that my friend, who kept beating me, was playing. Haven't had a hobby nightmare yet, but might try a tournament at some point, so we'll see. Lol. Best wishes, cowardly. Brilliant, man. I'm really glad that somebody from Games Workshop you know, redeemed the company a little bit there. Because these guys do exist in Games Workshop. This is, the, this is the point that I always keep trying to make with the company. Those are the guys you want to celebrate and promote and make sure that they're within your company for forevermore, essentially. Uh, we've seen both sides of the company in this video, and I quite like that. I quite liked having a duality there. Anyway, that is Hobby Nightmares for Friday. Uh, I love you all a long time. Please make sure you're following along and making sure you're getting your models from Composite Games if you're getting any models. They do help me and the channel out. And we are getting our prize draw prizes from Composite Games, so thank you very much to them. Um, thank you very much, guys. Have a lovely weekend, and I'll see you soon. Have a have a brilliant one. See you later.